Andy Mogul. Hey, Andy Mogulers, Russell here. This week's episode of Friday 101 is brought to you by Lucky Six Productions, a group that was featured on one of the earliest episodes of Moguler Made. Their newest movie is called Safe Room. I got to watch it, really enjoyed it. I think you guys are going to like it too. That short film is available to watch if you click the annotation on screen. Link is also in the description below. And I'll let Lucky Six take it away to explain more. Please do not panic. You are now within the confines of the world's most secure safe room from your friends at Kingdom Corporation. Continue to remain calm, and remember, we will let you know when it is safe to come out. Just realize in times like this, sometimes you have to take what you've been given. Hey Andy Mogul, my name is Nicholas Levante, I'm the director and editor of The Safe Room. And I'm Paul Danino Braun, some of you might remember me as a certain dad did impressions, and I'm the special effects supervisor on Safe Room. So we're basically going to be producing two videos about The Safe Room for you guys to watch. This one is going to focus on pre-production, so we're going to talk to you guys about how we got the film together and all that business. And the next week's episode is going to focus on post-production and all the glorious things that come with that. The Safe Room is a sci-fi set in the 1950s about a scientist named Dr. Greenglass and his team. What they're doing is they're trying to create a source of infinite energy to power the country or maybe even one day the world. And something with the machine goes haywire and it creates a chain reaction that more or less ends the world as we know it. And Greenglass is trapped in his facility's safe room where he's, he's stuck there and he's just left to wrestle with his guilt. So one of the most important parts of pre-production on a film is getting your cast together, making sure you've got good actors, because if you don't have good actors, then your film isn't worth anything and no one's going to like it, and it's going to be bad, and you're going to feel really bad about yourself after. For the lead, our casting director sent me a bunch of, like, candidates, I guess you could say, and, you know, I got in touch with them all, and, and we really kind of got our heart set on this one guy, Alan, and we went to, uh, we went to the city, we rented space, and, and we did, you know, we did a read-through with him, and, uh... This is a little video that we made there for the uh, for the Indiegogo backers, so we'll just show you right now. Hey guys, this is Paul Braun. I'm the assistant director and special effects technician on the safe room, and we are on a train right now heading into Manhattan for a meeting with one of the prospective actors for Green Quest, and we've got like a little audition thing. Hi, I'm Alex Cruz. I am here at Champion Studios with Nick, Paul, and Natalia. We are going to be meeting Alan for the uh, first time. Uh, Alan is our prospective lead who's going to be playing Dr. John Greenglass. Uh, I am already in somewhat of a uniform in my lab coat to help with the uh, table read. Hopefully, Alan will be the one that we've uh, been waiting for for this particular production. If not, we'll keep on working. I originally saw Green Glass as like a really like serious guy kind of thing, and you know that's kind of what I had my heart set on. And you know we met Alan, and you know like he's not a serious. Guy. He's not a serious he's guy. He's awesome. We love yeah. him. Funny as hell. But my point is always keep an open mind. Okay. So I ended up really liking how he played the part because he he brought this he brought a little bit more of like this lighthearted bit to it, you know, and I feel like it made Green Glass a more likable character. So our supporting cast is great as well. We have Felix, who is played by Alex Cruz, and we got him because we've done many projects with him in the past. He's also our producer. He did so much for us on this film. The movie wouldn't have happened without it, him. It wouldn't. Uh, we also have Laura Poe, who played Marilyn, Green Glass's wife. Uh, we got her through a casting website. Uh, basically, you know, we just we talked about what the role was on the website, and a bunch of people applied, and she was the best fit. 
Dignan, uh, we've worked with him before on other films as well, so that's how we got him on board with this. And then all the other scientists, all the extras and everything, uh, that's, a whole not that's another casting website deal. So again, I just want to make that point again, don't get close-minded with your films. You should really be taking into account what the people around you are saying about it, because you fall in love with your film, and then you can't look at it objectively anymore. The worst thing that you can do is say, oh, no, it's my way, and I want it like this, and you're wrong. Don't George Lucas it. You yeah. Know, let people challenge you and, and then listen to what they have to say. It's only going to make the project better. One of the ways that we helped fund this movie was actually Indiegogo. And the ultimate decision as to why we chose Indiegogo over Kickstarter was that with Indiegogo, you don't have to meet the goal that you set. With Kickstarter, if you don't meet the goal, you don't get the money, and then that's the end of it. If you've seen any of our projects, then you know how interesting those little details can be in terms of casting, in terms of making a movie, and just being able to do so much with so little. It's a real learning experience. And we obviously, we had some outside backers as well to help fund the film. You know, our producer was phenomenal in helping us make this happen. And you do what you gotta do to get the props and make things work. You know, you find an old fridge, you clean it up, you throw it in there, and then, well, look, you have a brand new prop, you know? Yeah. You find a table in a basement, you find one, you know, whatever. <laughs> Nick's neighbor got evicted, and we were able to get in touch with the people who then owned the house, and in exchange for us cleaning it out, we had full reign over the house to film in it and do whatever we wanted to it because it was going to get knocked down anyway. We actually, we also had the cast and some crew just sleep because we shot for a week straight. So we had them stay in the house and sleep there every night also. So it really worked out so, a lot. I mean, we were able to... It to was paint. a staging area. It's where we kept all the equipment. It's where yeah. We, yeah. It we, we painted the walls. We moved in all this furniture, all this, all these props. I mean... You know, we kind of lucked out in that a lot of the, the 50s, pro like these people were like hoarders, right? So <laughs> they had issues. They, they, they had like another house in their house, basically, like in the basement where they've been like hoarding all this stuff. And it just so happened that a lot of like the furniture down there was like old, like from the 50s and 40s and stuff. So we were able to repurpose a lot of that. And like, you know, we restored all that stuff. We cleaned it up and made it look nice. So that's where a lot of the stuff in the house came from that. And we'd buy props on eBay. And we'd go around, you know, that kind of deal. Just be creative with how you get your stuff. I mean, that's really the truth. We've got the scene where we've got these two 19, these two beautiful 1950s cars. We did not pay a dime for those cars. We went, you know, we, we knew that we needed period cars, uh, so we'd go to car shows around where we live and try to find people who had cars that look like what we need. And we would just talk to them, like, hey, listen, like we're making this, you know, the short film. Do you, you know, would you want to put your car in it? You know, just get, you know, it was good to get them excited for it and, and they wanted to help out. We had two different orders. One that focused on the camera package. Uh, we rented the Red Scarlet and some Zeiss lenses for it. We rented a, a Zeiss lens set. Our other order was our lighting package, sound gear, all that, all that business, all the expendables, everything else. Uh, that was a pretty big order. We had like 150 something items on our, on our order form for that one at least. You don't need all the stuff to make a movie. I mean, like, it's I... It's a luxury, having this exactly. stuff. It makes it easier. It can still get done without it. Yeah, like, the stuff that I see online of people going out and they shoot it with, like, literally just their DSLR and, and like, a crappy mic or something, and, like, it, it's good, and they make, like, it's... What I'm trying to say is it's about the story more than anything, and if your story is good and your audience is engaged, they're not going to notice that you used hundred dollar mic instead of a four hundred dollar mic like it's not a thing that's not something that anyone's gonna notice like that stuff's nice but you don't need it yeah don't and we're not gonna sit here and pretend like we didn't have to do stuff like that on this movie we did like you're not gonna know that there was a scene where we didn't have a c-stand available so I had to stand there and hold up a bunch of wires and just wait there and then use my foot to work a friggin dimmer like <laughs> nobody's gonna know that would it have been easier to use a c-stand and have a free person in it yes it would have but like i said a lot of this equipment is a luxury it's to make our lives easier so we can focus more on what we gotta do yeah so a lot of the stuff that people are doing at this level is low budget our stuff included i mean yeah. safe room was all things micro considered budget. micro budget yeah um where you know, basically, you're not always going to be able to pay everybody. Uh, you know, some people are going to have to work for free. We were lucky enough where we had a majority of our crew work for free. They were all our friends, so do that. Like, you know, ask your friends to help you out. You know, and, and in exchange, you can help them out sometime. Like, that's really... 
It's a give and take, you know? Yeah, it's like, a give and take. It's what you need to do in order to get your films made, because you need people. We had, well, it must have been like 12 or 12 to 15 people on set every day. The one thing that we always do, we always pay our actors. Pay your actors, give even something small, you know, reimburse them for transportation, whatever. If you can, do it. So that brings our pre-production video to a close. Uh, go watch Safe Room. Uh, I really hope that you enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it, subscribe to us. We've got a bunch of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. And uh, check out the post-production video next week. And if you don't like it, still click subscribe. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll change your mind down the line, you know?